Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> as far as uh, the issue of uh, dogs in Islam is concerned, I want to divide the discussion into a few different parts. The first is the general fiqhi perspectives, uh, particularly between Imam Malik and the other three mazahibs on this issue. And then the issue of the black dogs in Medina. And then some aspects, uh, actually, when I discuss the fiqh issues, that will lead me to some issues of the dog saliva and what research has found. And then we will from there discuss the uh, black dogs of Medina that have been mentioned in the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And, uh, and the situation in Medina with the black dogs. And then the third aspect I want to mention is some of the spiritual aspects related to dogs and the situation in Medina um, and what we can learn from it in general. So while uh, before I begin uh, there are a few things. Number one, being kind and good to any creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is uh, always a good thing. There's no question about that and even animals have rights. You know they should be given proper food and proper um, uh, proper living conditions, so on and so forth. Now, as far as the fiqhi aspect is concerned, the saying of the Prophet ﷺ that you should wash the dish in which the dog has eaten from, in fact the Prophet says to throw away the food and then wash the dish six times and then to wash it with soil and perhaps uh, you know uh, a lot of antibiotics come from soil like penicillin for example so in one of the ahadith it mentions to put the soil in the beginning and in the other towards the end either way some scholars are strict about using pure dust and pure earth other scholars say you know it could be any uh, thing like soap or and, and anything antibacterial that can be used to clean the the dish uh, or the utensils in which the food was there. So this is in the case of licking and I will in this case mention some scientific studies uh, in just a little bit. But just follow along and inshallah this will be uh, beneficial. So then, uh, but Imam Malik points out in his fiqh the saliva of the dog is not impure. And you also know that uh, in the hadith, so let me put it this way, the issues on this side, the, the, uh, the, the things to consider on one side and the things to consider on the other side. So on the side that the dogs uh, uh, should not be kept as pets, for example, when the Prophet وسلم, one day was waiting for Jibreel and Jibreel didn't come to meet him to find out, making a long hadith short, that there was a dog under the bed of the Prophet ﷺ, and he was removed. Also, the Prophet ﷺ said, angels will not come into a house that has a dog or a picture. And also, the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned that uh, huge amounts of good are taken away every day that a person from a person who keeps a dog in his house. So this saying of the Prophet ﷺ that two kirats worth of good deeds is taken away, uh, different scholars have different opinions how much that is, some say equal to the mountains, some say 40 years of worship, but either way, it doesn't make it necessarily haram, but it does show that Allah's mercy is uh, very much reduced in such a situation. Uh, <clears throat> because the prohibition is not of one that makes it a prohibition of haram, but a encouragement if you do this, Angels will not come if you do this. So many of your good deeds will be uh, worth, will be wasted. So now, uh, so some scholars have looked at these sayings of the Prophet. The other scholars have looked at the fact that the Quran allows for hunting dogs uh, and for hunting animals. The Quran, the ahadith mention the sayings of the Prophet mention the dogs coming and going from the mosque of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And uh, so there's this general statements about uh, and treatment of dog uh, the, that is mentioned in the Quran. Okay, and uh, one answer to the hunting dogs is, of course, if he brings the the bird or that was killed by the arrow or by the spear, then of course when they uh, bring the uh, 
it, they're not going to, they're trained dogs, so they're not going to actually bite into the meat. And then, of course, it is also cooked. The meat is cooked. So that is also something to consider. Uh, now, as far as the black dogs are concerned, it's uh, very simple. There was, uh, uh, d there was a disease amongst dogs, uh, like rabies or rabid, and uh, the Prophet ﷺ said to kill them. Also, uh, some of the uh, sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, where the Prophet has called them shayateen, uh, indicates that there was a certain type of dog in Medina. And see, one of the problems that all the scholars will admit with this particular narrations is that we don't know the whole story. So, because we don't know the whole story, we can tell you what we know, but to derive any legal ruling from it is not possible. So those sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, in which the Prophet did say to kill certain dogs, that, uh, and like for example, the dog that will come and interfere in your prayer to kill it, uh, why? Because if it's a dangerous dog, you have to kill it. And number two, so from the spiritual aspect, if the shayateen were using, because there was a lot of jinns in Medina, we know about the snakes in Medina, and if the shayateen were using these animals uh, and coming in the form of these animals to disturb the Muslims in their prayers, then the Prophet ﷺ took that action also. Also, the other thing to consider is that in Arabia, the Arabs were very, very near and had intimate relationships with the dogs, you know, uh, as we see many times today where people will give their entire inheritance to some, to their dog and not to their children. So uh, they had an intimate relationship and so the Prophet ﷺ wanted to cut off this relationship because dogs, uh, basically uh, it seems that Islam wants to surround you even with animals that have good spiritual qualities and therefore, you know, good qualities are mentioned of like cats uh, by the Prophet that they're pure or the camel and so on and so forth so the, you know submissive animals that have the the attribute of submission dogs do have some good attributes of course but they also have some negative attributes which the prophet wanted away from the muslims so this is a very concise discussion on this issue uh so you i have given you both sides that if a dog comes and licks you some scholars say you have to wash yourselves but the more stronger opinion to me personally seems to be that that is specifically for utensils and I did want to go over some of the research and science on this issue very quickly um, uh, there's an article out there and you can just type this into Google and look for yourself another reason why you shouldn't kiss your dog pets could pass antibiotic re resistant infections to humans scientists warn many uh, so on and so forth another one says why smooch your pooch uh, why a smooch with your pooch could make your teeth fall another one says and I'd like to quote uh, here something uh, just one statement and I think uh, he uh, this person who wrote an article called kissing dogs is unhealthy especially for kids writes that uh, you can't deny that you witnessed your dog licking his bottom many times so you know obviously feces uh, Dogs and feces, uh, this is a common thing that veterinarians know about. And so therefore, uh, you know, when people look at Islam and sometimes think it's backward and, you know, why does Islam have these rules? Well, uh, every time over, you know, every day over time, uh, it seems that knowledge comes to us that clarifies the teachings of Islam. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.